Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a custom moving door in Planet Coaster 2 using the movement platforms as shown in these examples. All these doors are in my Ancient Realm Temple themed build which you can see here on YouTube if you want to get a better understanding of how these can be used in a dark ride. And although this is primarily a tutorial for doors, the technique pretty much works for anything you can imagine that you want to animate in the game. The three moving platforms consist of a horizontal, a vertical and a rotational tool which will revolutionise the way you can build animatronics in the game. The first time I started playing about with these I was very confused about how they work but after a bit of practice the mechanic of these pieces becomes fairly easy to understand. To locate the pieces you go to scenery, uh, make sure you're on create custom here and it's props, animatronics and it's the first three pieces. So you just select one, place it down like a normal scenery piece, and then we can start adding objects to them. The actual doors themselves are very straightforward to make. Each one just consists of nine pieces, a viking side, we've got eight of these viking stone columns, and that's basically all there is to it. Let's start with a vertical door. In this example you can see the one side lifts up, while the other side drops down. Okay, so you can either start by adding an object to the move tool, which would be you just select a piece and you attach to moving platform. You click once and then you're in that group so you can place it. You can then place it wherever you want. So say you want it to still move but not be near the moving tool itself, you can place it here. Or you can place it on the tool itself and at this point you can add anything else to the group so if we pause it to stop it moving it makes it easier to place things and you can place another item and it will continue moving with the group so for what we want to do we want to add a group of scenery items to the moving platform and there's two ways we can do that we can either blueprint the um, scenery set and save it as a blueprint. We then click into the moving platform, we go advanced settings, attach scenery, and then when we go into blueprints, we can do it that way. Just attach it in exactly the same method as before. But the way that I actually prefer to do it is to click on scenery group, edit the scenery group, you drag over the entire group, and then either move it or duplicate it onto the moving platform. So control D for duplicate, attach the moving platform, we pressed it once to add it to that group and now we can finalize where we place it again. So what you can do here, you can move it around freehand like we looked at before. So for example it will be over here, it will still be moving. You can tell when it's moving, if we pause it it's easier to place it precisely. Um, but you can also now use the advanced move tool so don't click again at this point press the X on the keyboard and that brings up an advanced move tool move it to wherever you want and then X again to rotate it so say you need it to be horizontal but still have the up down motion that's how we would do that um, same with scaling X again you can scale it to the size that you need it and make sure you make all these changes before clicking the tick which connects it to the group and finalizes it so we click there press play and we can see it's moving up and down you can place a moving tool i tend to place them underground so that they're hidden at this point you can still go back if you need to move it again if it's not right so select all the pieces and use the advanced move again to reposition it or just move it freehand if you prefer. Click build. You can then use the advanced move tool or the freehand move tool to move the entire thing. And you can see the doors above ground but the moving piece is hidden. And although that sounds complicated, once you start playing about with it a few times you will get the hang of it really quickly. Um, it's quite a simple, straightforward sort of method 
It's just learning when to click, basically. Once we've got that in place, um, the other two doors are going to be pretty much the same method, um, which I will show you next. Now for the fun part, we're going to take a look at the settings for the movement tool and look at the different loops that we can have. So by default, it's usually on its default animation type and set to loop. If you want to stop it moving, deactivate it. Um, that's another great way actually to to move it to the exact position you want it in without pausing the game. Um, you can play once every certain amount of seconds on trigger only, which is to connect it to, to a track ride or to a sequencer, which I will show you in a bit. Um, but just to play around with the settings, we'll look at it on a loop. So there's each one of these moving platforms has different uh, animation types. So this is set to default, obviously. We've got static up, static down. You've got fast up to down. A slow version, and my personal favourite, which is explosive down to up. Perfect for sort of temple doors and anything that comes crashing down. So those are the settings for the vertical one. The horizontal and the rotational one have a lot of different options as well. The rotational one has the most options. To attach an object to the horizontal moving platform, it all works exactly the same. Edit scenery group, select all, and just click uh, once to bring it to the group, and twice to confirm it once you've chosen the position that you want. The rotational moving platform works slightly different when placing objects onto it. Uh, this is just because of the nature of how it moves. You click once to attach it, but then when you're positioning it, really, you want to look at where you want the axis to be. So if you want it bang in the middle, um, doing perfect circles, that's how you'd attach it, straight in the middle. And you're probably off, uh, better off turning the animation off while you do this. Uh, but if you want it rotating like a door, like we do, you put it sort of on the side here. Um, and you can see that you've got that door movement. Um, I'll also show you what happens if you place it, say, over here. You get a completely different um, style of movement, obviously, because it's based on where the axis is. Again, height doesn't matter, so you can sink it into the ground, no problem as well. When we're doing a pair of rotating doors or any type of doors, I find it's best to deactivate the moving platform control. We can select another door attached to moving platform. There we've got a pair of rotating doors. Obviously it's going to move the same way as the other one. Um, or no, it's not, it's going to go crazy. <laughs> um, but what we want to do is basically do the reverse of whatever we've got. So I think it's on quarter chop. And the other one's quarter chop reverse. So we do this as quarter chop. Now you can see they're not synchronized, but they are behaving how we want them to. It is also worth mentioning that this works exactly the same for the horizontal moving platform. If you want to do it with a vertical one, um, and have the doors moving in different directions so you will just need to rotate the actual moving tool itself upside down. So now we've built our doors and they look cool and everything but obviously we want them to interact with the rides and we do that by triggered events. If you've got experience in Planet Coaster 1 doing triggered events that will help but it's not necessary because it's actually pretty straightforward. We go into scenery and I can never remember which tab it is in, so I just search sequencer and we get this little sequencer piece. This can be placed wherever you want um, because you can literally link anything to it and that just allows you to make a trigger. So you click into it, click edit trigger sequence, and then we go add objects and it will give you uh, the option to drag the objects. So we select both of those and click confirm. Now you can see our moving platforms are both 
linked to this sequencer and the doors have stopped rotating. And the great thing about this is now, because they're in exactly the same place, it means they will synchronize and open at the same time and close at the same time. You can change this if you want any difference in movement. So you can have one, then the other, or however you fancy doing it. You can add loads of other stuff to it as well, loads of scenery pieces, lighting, whatever you want. And then when we go back to the sequencer, we go into activation and you can do it on a trigger, which can be linked to a coaster track or a track, a uh, dark ride or anything. Um, or you can do it continuous, so it will continue to go off or looping and on trigger and you can set if you want it hourly or whenever you want it. So that's sort of more for your animatronics really. If that all seemed a little bit complicated, do not worry because it's really straightforward to do this with a tracked ride or a coaster. I will show you now how to go about that. So we've got our ride here, click on the ride, go to customize and create trigger sequence. It gives you one option, which is to place a new trigger, unless you already have any on there. So we'll select that and then we've got a little uh, icon here for the trigger, which you can drag all around the track. So we're going to put it near the door um, and then go into edit. And that gives you the exact same sequence that we had before. Again, you add the objects. I can see here that mine are just under the ground under these doors. So these are rotating ones as well. I like them all and confirm selected. And we're going to test the ride. So there we go. Perfect. Just as the train approaches, the doors open and you can go through. Perfect for dark rides, but can work for pretty much any tracked ride you can imagine. And again, you can add all sorts of different triggers and lighting and animations to these trigger sequences. But that's basically a, a simple understanding of how to use the moving platform and make triggers with it. Um, by example, of these doors, like I say, there are so many different things that you can create with this. I'm sure there's going to be creators that are going to make absolutely mind-blowing stuff in the future using these three pieces. They're probably the three most useful pieces in the game. So I've already done a shameless plug for my build if you want to see some of these doors in an actual build. Um, but it's also worth checking out a creator called FSF Ranger. He does really good dark rides and has been doing for years on Planko 1 as well. Um, he's taken it to the next level with what you can do with these moving platforms. So definitely go and give his channel a visit. I just think building with these moving platforms is going to be the future for Planet Coaster 2. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If there's anything that you're stuck with or don't understand, please, please ask down in the comments and I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. I really do hope that you found this helpful and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.